another entry into the commercial gym series. And today's video is gonna be a little bit different because we are actually going back to the University of Houston for the first time since I dropped out of college to go train inside the rec center to give you guys a view of where it all started. Because for those of you that don't know, I am a former world champion powerlifter. I actually started my journey at the University of Houston. So when I was younger, kind of like a gym goer, I decided I wanted to try out powerlifting and I went to a U of H powerlifting club meet. Actually, no, I was more like a meeting. And we sat, I sat there and I was looking at the screen and I'm like, I actually want to go through with this and I actually want to become a legit powerlifter. And from that point, I started looking with the team and I was still kind of training at the rec and then I transitioned to training to other gyms, but I wanted to show you guys where it all started. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. How are we get ready for the gym? Got my backpack. So my backpack has basically some recording stuff in here, um, but we need to put my meat sleeves and wrist wraps. Actually, I lied, my wrist wraps and knee sleeves are on my car. We're basically ready to go. I need to put my journaling book in there. That's where I write all my thoughts when it comes to training. And it's weird because like, since we are going to the commercial gym, I'm probably not gonna be able to like, I mean like, it's not really a commercial, we're going to the rec center. I'm probably not gonna be able to like, you know, use comp standard equipment because I highly doubt they have power bars or kilos inside of the U of H rec center. I'm probably just gonna be lifting on some rubber pound plates and like some like flimsy ass bars, but that's okay because today's a secondary squat day. Now the most important thing that we need to make sure we do before we tip on out is spray some cologne on and I actually have a sponsor for that for this video. All right, this partnership could have come at a better time because I actually just ran out of cologne. Now I am working with Semper for this video. They sent me over some scents and we are gonna try them out. So it comes in this cool little bottle here. Whoa. <laughs> but the way that it works is that all you have to do is turn this little latch here or turn the little top here to locked and then open. Let me show you guys on the inside too. So it comes in this very nicely compact little bottle here. So this one right here is actually called Sexuality. Sexual, sexuality? I don't know, the way they have it here is kind of odd, but I was reading kind of what the scents are and it's very citrusy based. And uh, for those of you guys that don't know, and probably none of you guys know, because I don't talk about cologne on here a lot, but I wear it for every single workout, is citrus, see type of scents, something like more refreshing, is kind of my vibe here. So this is actually the perfume or the cologne that I decided I was gonna use for today's session. Uh, once again, I don't know if I've said this enough on this YouTube channel, but for sure on my Twitter and Instagram, yo, I need to make sure that I smell good when I go inside the gym. So every single time you see me or you see me inside of the gym, I literally have cologne on. So let's, uh, let's spray here. Yeah, that's the scent for today. So I'm gonna spray it. This is how I spray my cologne, by the way. Quick little walkthrough. Huh. Huh, then a little bit on the lips, it'll be right there. Now you don't want to actually rub it, because that kind of takes away the top notes, but I'll actually read what this scent is actually supposed to be, because I ain't gonna lie to you, I ain't trying to mess it up. So we got sexuality here. It is strawberry coconut, champagne figs, white flower accord, and rose tobacco. It smells like it. That smells good, I really like that scent. This is perfect for me also because the way that I apply cologne, like literally, I've had uh, cologne last me like three, four, five years, and people are always shocked when I say that, but literally like I just need a spray or two for me to go on about my day. So I'm gonna try another one out, and I really wanna try out the uh, the Royal Forest. Um, it's by English Landry, or Laundry. So I'm trying to figure out which one. The Royal Forest, okay, the reason why I wanna try Royal Forest as well is because it has lemon, grapefruit, Ber bergamot, apple, and orange rose. Or, yeah, orange rose. So this one, probably right in my alley. I can't spray it on me, because I'm not the type to kind of be mixing colognes and all that. I choose a cologne for the day, and that's kind of it. So let's, uh... Oh, that's good. I like that. Now, the type of cologne you wear says a lot about you as a man. I typically never leave the crib unless I spray something on my body. But for sure, if I'm going to the gym, I need something. So... Today's fragrance, once again, is going to be the sexuality. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's just sexuality, sexy, sex, sexuality. 
it kind of matches too because I'm, I'm sexy as hell. So what I really like about Scentbird is the fact that it is very affordable and it's also minimum risk. If you guys did not know, it's $8 for the first month off and then $17 going forward. What's really cool too is once again, I mentioned at the beginning, but these are really small. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't go too heavy on the cologne because you don't want to over well and people with your fragrance you just want to kind of have like that thing where they walk where you walk by if they're kind of on you you can smell it and these bottles are super small and it also allows you to kind of figure out yo do i actually like the scent or not because when you're paying that eight dollars you could order whatever you want i'm talking about prada gucci like all those type of big brands you can also do locate brands as well now what's really cool about this company is that when you go on the website it actually gives you a survey about the different types of scents that you like and once i put it in they started suggesting different fragrances that i've personally never tried because i got one fragrance that i roll with and i've been using for a very very long time and i was like i mean they're sending it to me so why not try something different so when they sent this one in sexuality i was like oh, i've never heard of this before i used it and now this is probably gonna be my daily rotation. And it's cool because they gave me a 30 day supply and I might actually commit and buy the full bottle at some point. All right, so here comes the juicy part. You can use code Russell to get 55% off. And hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. We got something new here. This is never, never before seen on my channel. We have a QR code and all you gotta do is scan it to get you where you need to go to. All right, so I know that's like a paid partnership, but I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I'm really, really actually about to add this to my rotation. I'm gonna put this in my bag right now. You never know, you might need like an extra spray here and there. But I'm being for real, like I do use cologne whenever it comes to the gym, it's like one of the things that I do. I shower, get a fresh baldy, you know what I'm saying? Do the shave thing, and then the last little bit there is spraying some cologne on. So I'm gonna put both these in my bag, just in case. Now it's time to make the special nectar that we are gonna be drinking. Sponsored by BPN, Code Rest World. Save 10% off the next. Purchase. Check this out, man. This is a fully loaded cabin here at VPN that we have over here. I'm also gonna get some electrolytes. I don't know if you guys have already been on this or not, but this has been a game changer for me. I be going to the gym like, veined up, bro. Like, it is actually insane. So, in the morning, I know I'm gonna make a full day of eating video at some point, but in the morning, my routine is obviously breakfast. And with breakfast includes two packets of these, which is gonna be a thousand milligrams of sodium along with electrolytes. And it makes a huge difference. Like when I tell y'all, when I go shower, the amount of veins that I already have, because I'm like, I'm probably hydrated and have the salt, uh, salt and sodium that I need inside of my body, it takes my performance to a different level because that's after the most important thing you could have, or not most important thing, but it's very important to be hydrated as much as possible. And I feel like that's something I've been missing out a lot on being a top level athlete like myself. I just have not been hydrating myself properly, especially training in Houston, Texas, where it's hot as hell. Now, luckily today, obviously we're gonna be training inside the U of H Rec Center and it's gonna be AC and stuff, but still gotta make sure that when we do start sweating, we're replenishing ourselves properly. It's that strawberry kiwi. I don't know about you guys, but as a pilot, I keep all my equipment inside my car. Probably shouldn't be saying that on camera, just because, anyways, I'm not gonna explain all that. I keep all my equipment inside my car, so my knee sleeves are here. Shout out to SPD, because they just gave me some new knee sleeves that came to film earlier this week. And then, this is something new that I've been waiting to announce on my socials. I'm experimenting with squat shoes. The Romelio Fours, I believe they're called. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, they feel amazing. But it makes it a lot easier for me to just kind of keep a count because I, I lose shit a lot. And honestly, if I was keeping it inside my... If, if I was keeping it inside my apartment, I live next to a, a fire um, fire station. Uh, if I was keeping this out of my apartment, I would definitely be losing stuff and forgetting stuff every single session. So keeping this out of my car. I don't know if y'all do that. Let's head on to U of H for the first time. Since I walked out of my biology class and dropped out. <laughs> Damn, this is bringing back memories. This parking garage was not here. It used to just be an open lot, so. 
I'm starting to feel like that old head that old head that returns to college or like their high school. I mean, we did a high school video about this, but this is weird as so. hell. Go Kooks! I didn't graduate. And then I would come here to like lift. This is nuts, man. I remember like having to walk up these stairs. Big ass walk on the wall over here. Fun fact, uh, I met Shali through the U of H Rec Center. So Shali, the owner of Anaka, used to obviously come, uh, you know, come to U of H. And I remember we found each other via like the U of H Rec Center like geotag whatever. So it's kind of crazy. I was just like going back here now. And I remember too, I was like doing Stairmaster and Treadmill over here. And then Shali came in and then he's like, yo, we should train at some point. Or he DM'd me. And I was like, yeah, we will. It never happened, but <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of cool. It just kind of cool. And I would watch people hoop over here after I warmed up. Oh shit, that's the track that I would do sprints on. Probably like a crackhead. Man, we have to find those clips of me on my IG page. Like, Way back when I would like record me doing sprints over here and then also like working out in this point over here. Also Brandon G's too. I don't know if you guys know who that is. He's like the, the guy for work. Uh, it's a hustle harder. Yeah, hustle harder. I met Brandon here and I'll show you guys exactly where I met Brandon. I'll tag everyone's stuff just so you can see how much people have grown since that point. But it's actually been some things that I just remembered as we got to the gym floor is you can't have your gym bag with you. You have to put it up in a cubby, I believe. And I'm looking around. I mean, the last thing I want to do is draw attention to myself like that. Because we're already doing something. I'm not even too sure if we can record. Oop, no one's ever said anything. No one said anything. Uh, but, you can't have your gym bag on the floor, so we have to get one of these cubbies. So I have to take all my shit out. It's a lot of piles and stuff. That's why it's just so annoying. But, like I said, I ain't trying to draw too much attention to myself. So we got belt. Knee sleeves. Uh, I'm not doing. I'll take wrist wraps, but we're not going too big on on squat like that. So we need to where we need wrist wraps like that. I'll just have it and have it. If I can grab it. Oh, there's so much stuff in mine. But here we go. Squat shoes. This isn't effective, by the way. U of H, if anyone's watching that has any type of power here, please. Let's uh, eliminate that rule. I'm not sure why that's a rule. Crowd control, floor control, you know. How about this? Wow, no, you can just record openly. Bro, that was not a thing when I was here. I think it's because social media is like, just kind of like ramped up a little bit more. But bro, you could not really record when I was enrolled here. This part's always. Figuring out how to get this down is always weird with these different racks. Okay. I feel like every time you squat in a new squat rack, you gotta figure out how it works. They have power bars here. It actually says power lift on the rack. <laughs> like, look at this. It says power lift right here on the side. I mean. I feel like powerlifting has kind of exploded to where like now it's, I mean, it's one of the main stays that you need inside of the gym. But these are Texas power bars. They're a little bit more bendy, but it's still a power bar, so we make it work. We're not gonna be squatting anything too crazy where the bar's gonna be bending too well. But just the fact that they have this option in the U of A track shows how much powerlifting is growing because, bro, that's not a common thing you have inside of the gym. Uh, so I'm like looking around. All this stuff brings me memories, or brings back memories, bro. Like, so over here, like in this general area, this is where I met Brandon um, from Hustle Harder. Brandon and Gary. Uh, but yeah, Brandon pulled up on me, he's like, yo, you got a nice physique, like. And he came, he's like, yeah, you look aight. I fuck. And ended up, you know, having a good friendship with him. And now he's head of Hustle Harder. Uh, he's like one of the top bodybuilding coaches in the game right now, and he's killing it, so. It's just crazy to see, like, just, different changes and like this is actually the area where I was discovered for powerlifting. I was training, I was doing squats and then the the president at the time of the UH powerlifting team walked up on me he's like, yo, 
you ever thought about powerlifting? And I was like, wow, that's perfect timing because I actually wanted to start powerlifting. And that's when I went to go to, uh, to the meeting. And from there, I became a powerlifter and the rest was history. So it's actually insane. Just kind of being in this area, it brings back the nostalgia of coming in here, recording clips and like posting on Instagram when it was only 15 seconds. Wow. Let me stretch. He's like, I didn't know you go to school here. <laughs> I was like, brother, <laughs> I do not go to school here. Wow, sexual misconduct assistance. Your rights, recognize, respond, refer to. Yo, society is changing. That is God, we didn't have none of this in you. Connect with us, wreck. I mean, I don't remember any of this stuff, man. It's so crazy how society is so intertwined with social media now. Back then, this wasn't a thing, like recording, was not allowed in here. Like you cannot record, bro. I remember you'd have to like sneak stuff. I just we walked by and I saw a whole dude with a tripod film his whole workout. No one's saying nothing. Like we, I'm stressed out with Duhan just holding the camera out, but no one gives a fuck. So it's just a. I'm, I'm like the old head now. It's like, oh, y'all allowed to record in here? so crazy they just have like a power bar shell. I think maybe when I was in when I was here at school they maybe had like one. I heard all of that. You heard that? Yeah. Bro, once I put on all the places I'm going to be using for my squat sets, I'm going to have no more real estate on the board. It looks like so much weight when it's just like for a while. So I was uh, thinking about what, what to do for the next set. Honestly, so today's workout is super fast, super easy. Uh, it's Thursday and we have been dealing with a slight tweak. I'm not gonna call it injury. But we've been dealing with a slight tweak. So I think I'm just gonna go with uh, five plates, which is gonna be 495 pounds. Yeah. 495 pounds, we're gonna do that for all three sets of three. It's supposed to make it look super easy, super smooth, with great phenomenal technique. And then we'll call it a workout. Oh, she thick. Oh, she thick. I mean, I'm looking at that, she looks bendy right now. So, um, yeah, these squat shoes, I mean, I was joking with Duhon, but I'm like, man, I might, I might start squatting hot bar. Someone, uh, I posted on IG and someone's like, look, John Hack. I'm like, that's, I mean, that's a compliment. <laughs> but uh, once again, 494, set of three. First set going down. So three dudes walked by and like they looked at the bar and they're like, this is you? I'm like, yeah. They're like, it's your max? I was like, nah. Like, what's your max? I said like around 750. They said, because I don't believe you. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, nah, like I can do that shit for real. He's like, are you human? I'm like, yeah. He's like, he's like, man, good shit, bro. And he dabbed me up and walked away. It's so funny how like, I feel like the environment of college campuses are a lot more funny because like, I mean, I kind of live near U of H. I'm like, I'm like barely five minutes away. Um, and it's just funny to hear some of the things that people will be saying. So I'm squatting right now and it's only five plates for, like, for the five or six people that are in here. They're like looking at people and they're like, oh shit. And it, once again, 
makes me remember that like this shit is not really that normal. And I'd be training pals in gyms where people are squatting like damn near a lot of people now squat 600 pounds and that's base level. But in a commercial gym, that's just not as normal. So. It's just so nostalgic, bro. Like, this is, wait, I'm 29 now. This is like nine years ago, almost a decade ago. And it's just cool to like see the differences that are made. Like, over time, you keep trying to keep working. And it's cool to come back and see where you came from and like what used to be. And then when you're thinking about what could be and what could happen, and then when it actually happens, it's, it's just so like, real. Just being back in here reminds me, or brings back all the memories of all the things that I wanted to be, wanted to do, wanted to accomplish. And it's like, I mean, this is where my piloting journey began. Like here, I was approached to join piloting here, and uh, I knew that I wanted to do something great in the community, in piloting. And shit, I, I came back. I'm here now as like, you know, a, a pretty big pillar in the piloting community, so it's just super dope to be back. Yeah, man, just being like, even on this track and stuff. Like, I used to roll out my ladder, my speed ladder, and I'd be like, looking like a crackhead in front of everybody. But like my vision for what I wanted to accomplish was more important than what people thought about me here. Like I'm telling y'all, if y'all, man, I used to be like a, a head ass in here. Recording all my videos, training like a crackhead, running around, you know, lifting a shit ton of weight, not really caring what people thought. That stuff pays off eventually, man. Bro, I, I don't remember all of that. Damn. You know what's so crazy too? Like, <laughs> we were working out. There's been a couple people that have come up. And uh, the funniest thing is like, are you Russ? And I'm like, yeah. And it's funny because like, who else would I, I almost wanted to ask like, who do you think I was? He's like, yeah, because I saw you whipped and I saw the professional camera. I saw them on the weight on the bar. I'm like, is that him? I'm like, who else, <laughs> who else looks like this? I'm like, he's doing that, bro. Shout out to everyone here that uh, that goes here. Show love. I kind of want to walk around like downstairs over here. But it's funny because I would finish up lifting here. And my routine was I would go. I don't think they have any more. But there used to be like a Smoothie King out here. I think it's like some other store now. But I will load up on Smoothie King. And then I will go to Chipotle. And get a fully loaded bowl. Damn. Yeah. Okay. I almost want to go to Chipotle. And get, kind of bring back them college vibes. From, like how I used to get down with it. Go to Chipotle, get you know the double chicken with the rice, with the peppers, a little bit of black beans with um the pico, a little bit of mild, and then on top of that, sour cream, a little bit of cheese, lettuce, large bag of chips. That's a push right there. I mean, well, I mean, obviously they didn't before, but probably going to train here. Yeah, I mean, it's like all bumpers. Just being in this area, I mean, granted, this whole parking section was not here when I was here, but just kind of being back. Uh, I'm thinking about all the memories that I have. Like I remember sitting in this parking lot listening to Pimp a Butterfly for the first time and damn near crying and like getting a workout in after that. And then I just remember, like I said, being kind of found in here in regards to piloting. I just remember just so many different memories, like stressing about school, stressing about whether I still wanted to do this shit, stressing about, you know, should I make that leap to drop out and pursue my dreams? And you know, now I'm here. So like, I know there's a lot of people that are like around the age of like starting college or maybe you're going into college or you're in high school whatever and like you're very unsure about like how your life's gonna pan out all i can really say is you know trust your work ethic keep working keep grinding because i used to be that same person just like y'all watching these type of videos wondering what i was gonna do with my life wondering where i was gonna go and i wasn't sure but i knew that i had a work ethic and i knew that i was pushing towards something and i knew that it would pay off eventually and here i am damn near 10 years later uh, coming back to the same spot where it kind of all started and looking back and being thankful that I just kept my faith and I kept working, I kept growing, and I ended up where I wanted to be. So um, I didn't really mean this to be like that motiva motivational, but like I just remember just being a college kid, like unsure about the future, stressed, worried, concerned, and uh, I just kept pushing, kept working, and everything kind of panned out. So man, just coming back here. 
at first I thought it was kind of weird because I'm like, yeah, I'm coming back like one of them old heads that can't let go of the past. But it was more so just like a celebration or reflection of what the past was and how the future panned out. So, I mean, shit, keep working. It's okay to have those feelings, but you, you have to keep pushing and keep grinding. So, anyways, thank you guys for tuning into another episode of the Commercial Gym Series. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, if you guys like today's video, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Get better today. Go Cougs. I'm out. Oh,